So when I started this channel, I promised myself that I would not do reaction or response videos. Unfortunately, I recently saw a video about Fight Club, American Psycho, Taxi Driver, and other films that feature violent male owners that made the frankly embarrassing argument that these films articulate some sort of masculine rebellion against the conformity of modern society. So now I've been forced to break my pact. So let's start with this clip here. Okay, let's start with the most important theme in American Psycho, conformity. Because at its core, that's what this movie is all about. Patrick Bateman is living a fancy lifestyle as an investment banker on Wall Street. He's living healthy, eating a balanced diet, and doing rigorous exercise routines. Every morning, he's applying thousands of layers of beauty products to craft the perfect version of himself. Down to the haircuts, the suits, the business cards, it all shows that these men think they're individual and unique, but they aren't. No, 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 no. Patrick Bateman and American Psycho are not critiques of conformity and what happens when everyone is the same. That is a very shallow reading of what the author and film intended. American Psycho is a satire of the wealth and status obsessed yuppie culture that emerged in the corporate 80s. Patrick Bateman does want to fit in, but his main pathology is that he is a fucking psychopath. The iconic scene with the business cards is not just a joke about how similar they all are, but also at the fact that Bateman is visibly distraught and boiling with rage when others are ranked above him. The book, if you've read it, is a kaleidoscopic nightmare detailing the products that Bateman owns, the products that his peers own, and constant comparisons regarding their tastefulness and cost. And it's all punctuated with graphic scenes of torture and cruelty that Bateman doles out to women and those who he deems less than himself. Bateman is an empty shell that's sole obsession is the acquisition of power and status and lording it over those who lack it. Even his opinions on music and politics are empty ruses. His infamous speech about Huey Lewis and the News, like other remarks that he makes, has obviously been plagiarised from some trendy magazine and privately rehearsed so he can trot out at a dinner party and make himself seem deep and cultured. He chastises a peer over anti-Semitic remarks, only to make anti-Semitic remarks himself. He has a fiance he shows no care or concern for, and when he fucks two prostitutes, he's obsessed with how he looks in the mirror. He doesn't even really enjoy the things that he has. Like his peers, he is a soulless automaton of narcissism and indifference, which is why he makes for such a biting satire of 80s yuppie culture. The fact that Bateman can and does fit in in their society, despite being comically cruel and utterly unhinged, is a condemnation of how the profit and privilege of upper class society in the 80s produced not a society of wealthy cultured patricians, but instead a menagerie of nihilistic ghouls. Patrick Bateman is a villain, he is not a tragic hero with a mental health condition, and he is nothing like the narrator of Fight Club. You see, in Fight Club, they don't like conformity that much. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. Tyler Durden is the god of masculinity, trying to break the main character free from his conformist lifestyle and boring job. Okay, first things first, how the fuck do you watch scenes like this? His name is Robert Paulson. Come on guys, His please, name stop it. His name is Robert Paulson. And come away with the belief that Tyler Durden hates conformity. And while we're on that topic, let's make this perfectly clear. Tyler Durden is an impossibly attractive and charismatic masculinist insurrectionary played by Brad Pitt. He wears gregarious designer clothing, has the physique of an elite male model, and spoiler warning, is not real. The irony of Tyler Durden is that while he and his adherents think he is a rebellion of some true primal masculinity, the reverse is actually true. He is entirely a product of modern culture and is only ever making whatever crisis there is worse. I cannot stress this enough, Tyler Durden does not exist even in the world of the film. He is a homoerotic underwear model dreamt up by a disillusioned office worker who leads a romanticised cult of self-harm that turns its members into slavish droning goons. The idea that Fight Club is about fighting conformity, again, what the fuck were you watching, or how awesome it is to unchain the beast within, is absurd when the end result of Tyler's project is a fascist cult of obedience that guarantees nothing but steady immiseration for all of its members. Neither the film nor the book provides total support for Durden's vision, though both the book and film clearly think it is significant that a lot of men take Durden up on his offer. Now to be fair, in modern capitalism a lot of people feel alienated by the world around them, and importantly, not just men. 
but men are facing a changing landscape in terms of what is acceptable, and with the rise of movements like Me Too and the need to find a new sexual script for courtship, finding a heterosexual partner if you're a man has been rendered slightly problematic. How do you flirt without coming across as a creep? Where else can I meet people in an increasingly atomized society? Can you, or should you, make displays of your masculinity? I can certainly see why anxiety would build up around the topic of masculine identity, and this problem is compounded by the fact that due to restrictive gender roles, many men struggle with expressing their emotions and supporting others, meaning men can often find themselves in a place that feels very rudderless and lonely. A further note in Fight Club is that the protagonist attends therapy meetings because it's the one place he can go to have a genuine connection with other people that lets him sleep. And it's people that he met at the therapy meetings who in the book and the film offer the only genuine lasting connection outside of the spiralling mess of Project Mayhem. The disease of Tyler only arrives once the therapy stops working for the narrator, and the points where the narrator thinks he is sleeping, he's actually not. When the narrator sleeps, that's when Tyler goes to work. The narrator was alienated and lonely, and found connection by opening up emotionally to other human beings. That connection is violated when Marla enters as an imposter that ruins the authenticity of the connection, which is when Tyler seduces the narrator into a cult of violence. The narrator thinks he has been healed again, but it's just his pathology kicking into high gear and deceiving him. The arrival of Tyler didn't fix the problem. The narrator wasn't sleeping, he was disassociating. Tyler's Fight Club was a worn out band-aid hastily slapped across a gunshot wound and could never have truly helped the narrator out of his predicament. Now I don't blame anyone really for their poor takes on Fight Club. Most people experience it through the film and Brad Pitt and the Fight Club movie itself do an excellent job of selling Durden's worldview before the final act where it unravels. The best propagandists after all mix a dose of truth in with their lies. And Tyler is right about seizing the day and seeking new experiences, and he has a valid critique of the hollowness of 21st century capitalism, but the version of hypermasculinity that he offers is broken. Tyler can mock underwear models all he wants, but he himself is the product of a culture that romanticised almost unattainable physiques like his. What's more, the cult of violence he offers is a poor substitute for the real, genuine connection that men need to grow, heal, and sleep. So if you're convinced that Fight Club and American Psycho are masculinist revival films, please consider looking at those films again, and especially with Fight Club, pay close attention to that last third act. You are supposed to sympathise with the narrator's horror.